You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Startup Blog Insights, the top 10. Number seven. Hey, let's go to number seven. Agile and non agile entrepreneurs must communicate clearly. Yeah, I remember that. One of the interesting things uh, that you find is that uh, the people understand. Uh, what's being told to them based off of their experiences. Yeah. If their experiences don't carry the same experiences that you have, the communication may not mean the same. So I was working in the former Soviet Union with uh, one of the companies that I had, and and um, you know of course there's a language barrier, and the translation in their language is bad enough, but conceptually, you know, um, what their experiences were were totally different than mine. And when you're talking to them about being entrepreneurial and those other, it's totally different for them. It doesn't mean the same thing. Now, at one point, we actually had uh, had an audit that had to take place because we were a public company, and 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 you know these guys were doing stuff. So the auditors were over there, and they didn't know that I had that my auditors had had the article translated from English to Russian. And so I had the English version, and I had the translation back into English from them, and I held them up, and they didn't say the same thing. <laughs> really? So you, so you can have easily uh, communication um, issues uh, based off of experiences uh, that people have had, and sometimes in terms of interpretation of language, uh, even if it's in English, you know, you, you, you're going to have those differences, and it's and it's kind of difficult for people to understand where you're coming from. So I'm oftentimes when I uh, am trying to help a company, I get kind of aggressive. I'm like Simon Cowell. <laughs> a good aggressive. A good but, but aggressive. My, but my, but my, but my uh, what I do is I'm evaluating whether they'll be interactive, how they'll work with me and other kinds of stuff. At the same time, I'm trying to sort through if what they're doing, if there's an alternate path that might be uh, better. And usually at the end of the discussion, if I see alternate strategies, I'll give them some alternate things to look at. But, you know, what I'm doing and how I'm behaving and how I communicate, they may, they may totally misinterpret interpret and think I'm being extremely ugly and I'm, a, you know, negative and all, a whole bunch of other stuff. It's just easy to come across in the wrong way when you're communicating with people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I deal with the Japanese all the time, and um, I almost have to switch my mind over to how a Japanese person thinks to sometimes get a point across or just understand what they're trying to tell me, like you were saying earlier. Yeah. Um, cultural cultural norms are so influential in the way people think, obviously, right? I mean, you know, you know, so I, I think that. That was a great article, actually. I really, really, really enjoyed that one. I mean, so, if you go to Japan, I always, always taught you do you never if you go to any of the Pacific Rim countries, you never take a business card and put it in your wallet and sit on it. Yeah, 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 um, exactly. You know, here, people do that all the time, but there is irreverent, uh, and you always look at the business card for some period of time, uh, you know, to show reverence to the individual and that kind of stuff. So, you know, it it. Depends on whether they're westernized or not, <laughs> but but literally there are differences in how people behave and how they think and everything else. So you just got to be prepared. You got to be you know things that you don't have to say anything to communicate poorly. Right. 